This is the 42 inch touchscreen PC which we modified about a year ago on this channel, uh, turning it into something rather useful. Uh, however, as uh, the keen eyed viewer might be noticing, it is missing some pieces, namely the main board. So this thing does have an integrated PC with its own power supply and everything. And we're doing something about that because this thing dates from about 2010 and the main board it shipped with was this uh, first generation i5 based uh, Intel uh, system on a board thing. So this is an i5-650, uh, uh, scrolling about 3200 points in CPU benchmark which isn't shabby at all. However, I recently got my hands on this. And this is quite the step up because this is a an ASRock uh, ITX of some sort motherboard uh, with an i7-4770 installed as well as 16 gigabytes of DDR3-1600. So this board, while the previous one would have been absolutely adequate for most office type use, will actually do stuff like video streaming and uh, well, video editing really. Uh, you can't run a GPU on it in the case of the uh, touchscreen PC, but with a CPU that powerful, you are opening up a lot more possibilities, and it's got USB 3 as well, which is very welcome, since my video capture devices use that to connect. So, uh, we're obviously going to be installing this into the case, however, that, that does bring a few challenges with it. Uh, so the thing that sticks out the most about this board is of course the fact that it's got a rather unique cooling solution. Uh, this heatsink is ripped out of a Dell small form factor PC and uh, it does not provide any airflow uh, across the motherboard at all, uh, making the VRM on this uh, low-end ASRock motherboard feel a bit, uh, shall we say, harassed. Now this, the VRM portion of the board gets up to about 100C under full load and that's not okay. Uh, so uh, when we install the board, we're also going to be installing some thermal pad and a piece of aluminium, uh, thermally coupling the VRM to the case of the whole device, uh, providing it with some cooling, as long as it's like 80 degrees and below I'm fine and I think that's gonna uh, do it because uh, with no airflow you just have no cooling on this board whatsoever. Uh, beyond that, however, since the heatsink is sticking out rather far beside the board, uh, we are going to have to make some changes. And to top it off, this board has uh, one slot more than the original board, uh, making it so that uh, it will hit some stuff in the case due to it being about a centimetre wider. So, uh, I do have a bit of a plan of action. So what we're going to be doing is uh, first get rid of the hard drive mount here uh, because that's interfering with the heatsink. Uh, once we have that out of the way, there's nothing in the way of the heatsink and that's good. Uh, nice thing, we have a bit of a hole underneath here as well, which is going to allow the heatsink to draw a bit more air, which is very welcome since it's otherwise sitting so tight against the back plate here. In fact, I might even just cut a bit of a bigger hole there to facilitate airflow. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Uh, but we're also going to have to uh, cut this main out because that's uh, grabbing on the, on the board and we are going to have to move the power switching board which is this uh, homemade board over here uh, which uh, serves as a monitor power on board because originally this device had no means of turning off the big power supply for the 42 inch monitor. This was powered on all the time and it draws about 10 watts just sitting around and that's not really okay today. Uh, so yeah, uh, the plan of the layout is uh, I'm going to put this board up here just to have it out of the way, drill for holes, mount it no biggie. Uh, we are going to have to extend this wire which goes to the external power outlets there, which uh, uh, serve to provide power to like audio equipment and uh, other stuff you want to turn on with a PC. Uh, so that, that's really not a big deal. Uh, what is perhaps going to be a bit of a bigger deal though, is the power supply. Because I've actually measured the power consumption of uh, the new board and it is uh, a tad higher than the original. 
Uh, this pen is, part, is a Seasonic SSF160U1. Uh, uh, it's 160 watts rated, which is fine, but it's only rated for 8 amps on the 12 volt rail and uh, 11 amps peak, according to some Chinese uh, data sheet. And uh, the 8 amps continuous is just ever so slightly under what the new board is drawing under full load. It draws about 8.5 amps. So, yeah, that poor power supply is going to be a bit tasty, I think. Yeah, but uh, uh, I have a plan for that because I have leftover parts. And the most important one of those, ah, there it is, is this fan. Uh, this is the fan which shipped with the Erebus CPU cooler. Uh, which went into my main video editing PC a while back and while this fan is a bit of a silly thing, it is very very thin making it suitable to fit into the back of a PC. So, I think uh, that fan combined with the thermal pads and this weird Dell cooler which uh, by the way has an AMD uh, stuck fan on it, is sucking out from the downside uh, it's going to provide decent performance. So, uh, yeah, let's just uh, get to work with this. Uh, I think I'm going to just uh, take the whole uh, back plate of this out because uh, that's reasonably easy to do since we're going to be drilling holes. We don't want a uh, metal particles going everywhere. Oh, and there we have all the PC and pages like guts taken off to the side, leaving us with a display panel and inverter module and all the smarts that go behind it. So, for the curious, we do have a panel number van, eh? Manufactured 2010 AU Optronics, right? Yeah. No idea what the specs for that are. They're probably good enough. So, uh, what we're going to be doing now is, uh, for starters, uh, removing the hard drive cage, because that's uh, the biggest obstacle here. Uh, I'm probably just going to I put it like uh, over there somewhere or I don't know somewhere out of the way and we're also going to be getting rid of a couple of these uh, screw mounts and uh, mounting the page by switching board right there so it's just a question of drilling a bunch of holes tapping them and putting spaces in them okay here's the mock-up so I removed the hard drive and Place that right in the middle of everything there. Uh, two of the mounting holes for the bracket are going to go kind of underneath the TV pay supply, but uh, that's just fine, it's not touching anything. Uh, beyond that, it fits really tightly and neatly in there, which is a relief because fitting it anywhere else would uh, require an unreasonably long SATA cable. Uh, so the motherboard fits just fine. Uh, you can see the hole for the hard drive caddy does not quite line up with the uh, heat sink. So uh, my plan is right now to just drill a bunch of holes underneath where the fan goes uh, to uh, just give it a bit of an easier time. It does provide decent cooling, uh, even though it's just lying flat on the surface. Uh, but uh, due to the layout of the back of the case, uh, we are probably going to have the fan feeding out back into pretty solid metal so it's not going to have super good flow on the exhaust side instead uh, might have to drill a few holes there as well but uh, either way there's going to be a wall mounting bracket going right across where it spews out hot air so yeah we're basically screwed no matter what on that thing uh, but uh, that's pretty much it uh, the switching board fits perfectly up there four holes tap them to M3. I get one for free because there's a ground log there which is not used so I just have to drill three holes and hopefully get those to line up and uh, that'll be all set. Okay, fast forward a few hours and things are starting to take shape. Uh, most of the metal work has been done by now and uh, most of the electrics as well. So for starters, the power switching board has been installed. That's uh, got its mains working perfectly well, uh, that went very smoothly indeed and the wiring is uh, extended and ready to go. You can see I've got zip ties prepared to mount it uh, to the page so it's not uh, flopping around in the breeze once everything's back together. 
Uh, as far as the cooling solution went, uh, I started drilling a few holes in the chassis, realized that was a terrible solution, so I just got out the oscillating tool and cut a great big hole where the CPU fan uh, lines up and that's going to give us a much better airflow to the CPU than any amount of holes would and uh, it's fine as far as structural integrity goes, I don't think this big steel construction is going to fall apart anytime soon. Uh, so for the time being I'm working on getting the power supply and power switching stuff working uh, because previously the trigger signal for the power switching board was just soldered straight into the power supply and I didn't want it to be that way in case I have to take the power supply out uh, for service or something like that in the future. So it is receiving some surgery and uh, on top of just the creating a proper connector which is going to hook to a power supply instead of having it soldered in directly, I'm also adding a second uh, power switching input. So previously this was the only connector uh, providing a signal to this board. Now we have this uh, PC fan header as well and uh, they're separated by a diode or there so uh, you're not going to backfeed anything through either connector. Uh, the reason for this is I want uh, the new connector to run out to a DC plug on the back of the TV so that I can put 12 volts in this from the outside and turn the monitor on. And that is so that uh, I'm not stuck using only the internal PC for anything with this mon monitor. It does have two inputs so it would be rather useful to have it serve uh, as just a 42 inch VGA monitor as well. Why not? Uh, we have perfectly good capability of doing that. Uh, I don't think I'm going to bother uh, dragging the touch functionality out because that would mean having to rewire the USB connector it's uh, hooking, in, hooking up through, uh, which is yeah, uh, it's just lying. So around here this goes straight to an internal USB 2 header, so I don't want to really touch that. Uh, I think that's going to be fine, I don't think I'm going to bother uh, using any external PC with this for touch anyway. That's just for monitor functionality. Uh, so, uh, we're pretty much uh, ready to get the new guts installed. I've got to uh, mount the new uh, power switch input there in the corner, but that's just uh, threading it on and uh, soldering the connector in place. And uh, then we're pretty much done as far as the rewiring is concerned. I do think I have to tidy everything up once we have everything installed. But uh, that's a minor job. All right, and we're now ready to install the motherboard. And I was almost about to forget the fact that we need extra VRM cooling. And there you can see our solution. So you can see we have a total of three pads and one piece of aluminium. Uh, the pads are just there in such quantity to make up the height required to actually press up against the case. Uh, this is not, of course, very conducive to a good thermal conductivity, but we don't need a huge amount of that. Uh, there's not a lot of power being dissipated in uh, this voltage regulator, it's just that it has nowhere to go. So if we have just some kind of thermal conductivity down to the steel case, that's going to be enough to bring the temperature of this VRM down to a reasonable level. And that's what we're going to achieve here. This is a very common technique used in plasma TV, TVs, for instance, well, they just have uh, several centimeters, almost two centimeters thick uh, thermal pads uh, between the driver boards and the case. The uh, case being aluminium in that case, but uh, still, uh, this is a viable method for achieving some kind of cooling better than just for PCB. Okay, and there we have everything mounted and loomed. And uh, while the looming job is uh, by far not the prettiest thing on earth, I'm very happy with how this has turned out because, uh, frankly, everything fits. Uh, so, uh, what we have is our hole lining up perfectly with a CPU cooler, allowing it for pretty good airflow. That's a good inch or so of space, and it can suck air from all the bottom side of uh, the case around this. There's about a one and a half centimeter gap underneath there, and uh, there's a big hole pretty much along all that edge 
and uh, all this said, Chevas excellent physics going to perform better than on table. Uh, and to make things better, uh, I checked the alignment there, and it's actually exhausting out most of the holes in my back, so we don't even need to drill any new holes. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very happy about that. So, uh, moving on, uh, most of the looming work is um, done to uh, prevent uh, these uh, unprotected uh, Cat5 internal wires from uh, touching uh, basically the underside of power supply boards where there might be 230 volts going. Uh, stuff like this isn't, isn't really dangerous because this is all uh, insulated, it's uh, lacquered wire in the transformer and I have taken an effort to actually isolate underneath uh, the heat sinks there. V v these are not live heat sinks but just to be on the safe side. Uh, the new modified power switching board <coughs> it works great. I haven't tested it uh, in the actual device yet, so we know. I, I know that uh, this new connector works. I don't know if the old one actually does. So uh, that's going to be a bit of an experiment. Experiment when we power it on, and uh, everything really fits in rather neatly. This hard drive certainly is crammed in there between the audio amp and a power supply there. Gosh, you can barely make it anything there. So we have the PC power supply, the audio amp, the hard drive, the TV amp, and the power supply for the audio amp there. And of course, the PC itself with its giant, ridiculously large gaming hardcore RAM 6 going there. Uh, I should also point to the elephant in the room. Uh, this is not an approved way of mounting a power supply fan. Uh, this is uh, uh, just zip tied to uh, wiring there, wiring there coming from the audio and power supply, and uh, a heat sink on the other side there, as well as some wiring. Uh, it, it's sticking in place quite well. And these uh, little uh, window uh, gasket uh, things I very gently rest against the back side of a case, keeping things very aligned and sturdy. So, uh, while a very ugly solution, I, it, it's going to be very effective. Uh, certainly better than the original fan, uh, which we actually couldn't even use because the original case fan for this PC was a three pin fan and uh, this cheapo 2013 motherboard doesn't have any control for three pin fans, it's just got PWM output so we need a four pin fan in order to have it not rev at six phase in RPM forever and uh, kill us in the process. Ah. So, uh, really uh, all we need to do now is uh, put the case back on, uh, right, raise this thing up, it can't balance without the back case on, so we sadly can't really... Or can we? Yes, we can, uh, so uh, I've disconnected the hard drive so it won't boot into the OS, but uh, we can actually power this on in order to see that the fans are turning and uh, that uh, the panel actually turns on. So. Uh, here goes nothing. The panel is going to die uh, after a sec because it's we don't have a display cable connected. But for 230 on, nothing went up in smoke. And I did hear a relay click. Big fan is turning. Small fan is turning. Is the display doing anything? Okay, let's try that again with the uh, DVI connector actually plugged in. I just want to see that uh, it lights up. Oh, yeah. No, it's lighting up just fine. So we have signal going out of the display. Everything's running. I'm confident this is going to be fine, although uh, we're going to have to try and load test this and see if the poor pay supply is just going to turn on if we leave Pro 95 running for a while. Uh, hope not, but uh, decent risk of that, sadly. Okay, we're up and running. It hasn't shut down on me once, but uh, we are prepared with a torture test. So uh, we've got a speed fan up here showing our fan speeds, CPU-C showing our uh, CPU speed, and Pro95 ready to fire up. I know this CPU draws uh, over 100 watts uh, when you do the small FFTs uh, the first few seconds before it uh, jumps into the max TDP 84 watt mode uh, but uh, if this is gonna 
explode, it's going to do it pretty much instantly while we're overloading the uh, power supply. So here we go. And it did not explode. Now, we're currently drawing about 200 watts. So it's going to throttle down in just a sec. There we go. We're down to 3.4, 3.5 gigahertz uh, as it should be. And uh, yeah, the CPU cores, they hover around 80C under this uh, super high load. We don't get all the temps, and this should have, uh, should have brought real temp as well. But uh, yeah, now we basically just have to let this run for a rather long time. Uh, because I really want to know if this is going to keep up, if the power supply is going to go on fire, if anything is going to fail. Uh, I want to know before I put this thing into service. So this thing's just going to have to sit around and uh, suffer for a while, I guess. Uh, it's a bit of a shame. It's rather cold in here. Uh, barely 15C, probably less than that down at the floor level. So it's going to have a rather easy time at it. But uh, yeah... ATC on the CPU. I think it'll be. I think it'll be good enough. Now, all things considered, uh, given the form factor of this PC, uh, I'm quite uh, happy with the noise level. Because uh, if we crouch back here, there really isn't too much to listen to. If we grab a mic, we do have noise but uh, it's not horribly screechy and whiny as you might expect from a system like this. It's uh, quite acceptable, quite acceptable indeed. I'm, I was quite worried about the noise level on this uh, when I set out making it, but uh, no, no, this is, this is absolutely fine, absolutely acceptable, thank goodness. And if you're curious as to how much power this monstrosity uses, well, I just cranked the brightness to 100% uh, and uh, with the maintained full load we are drawing 430 watts uh, but the vast majority of that is uh, in the display panel so if we uh, go to our brightness knob and turn that down to the most sane level really minimum is good for this lighting uh, we Draw probably the vast majority of that, yeah. Yeah, 250 watts full load uh, with a display on. So, uh, that's uh, what a decent gaming PC would draw. For, for, uh, I, I'm not uh, too concerned about it since it is, you know, a 42 inch uh, uh, CFL backlit uh, uh, panel that's not the most energy efficient. Uh, display that's just the way it is oh wow okay so i went and got myself core temp and jesus the small fft setting on the prime 95 is absolutely destroying this poor cpu 98 watts no wonder it's running super hot it seems to be kind of thermal throttling by now christ let's uh, do another test because that is too brutal Okay, I stepped it down to large FFTs, which is putting us uh, squarely at the 84 watt TDP of a processor, which is uh, giving us considerably better temperatures, uh, hovering around 80C. And still, that's not too bad, considering the heatsink uh, came from a small form factor Dell PC, which shipped with an i3-2120, and it's got the stock fan from an AMD APU. So, all in all, I'm rather happy it uh, handling 84 watts at all without going on fire. We, these are very low-end components for, uh, for what they're doing right now. All right, so right now I'm measuring the voltage-regulated temperature under full 84-watt load uh, uh, to see if our cooling solution has worked. Uh, with no extra fan on it, uh, these... Uh, Transistors were uh, about a hundred C. So let's see what we have. And our maximum peaked at uh, 85 C. So that is considerably better than they did uh, on the bench uh, with no extra cooling. So uh, our solution to uh, 
dissipate the heat into the chassis of the actual TV seems to be working just fine because that is definitely an improvement. And uh, thank goodness for that because this low-end H81 motherboard, it wasn't built to take a 4770. It's a miracle it even accepts it at all. Ah, well, we've left the thing running overnight. It's been a good 12, 14 hours this thing has been running at uh, rather high temperatures, maximum load. Even playing Fritz the Cat in the background, oh dear. That's not a scene we need on YouTube. Uh, but I am very happy that uh, nothing has gone wrong. This thing is running absolutely as it should. It's showing no issues, no power supply issues, no overheating issues, to say, say for the year ATC CPU temps, but we don't care about that. Uh, it's even turboing up to 3.5 gigahertz, which I think is uh, uh, one turbo step above what uh, it's rated at. I think it's a 3.4 gigahertz processor. Oh, yeah, you can see right there it says 3.4 gigahertz. So that is certainly acceptable performance. I'm quite happy with that. Very happy, actually. So uh, all we have left to do now is uh, get to the SSD, which I just imaged over a uh, setup. I'm just stealing the SSD out of my streaming PC and putting it into this device since I obviously don't want a bloody mechanical hard drive in a PC that's as difficult to take apart as the giant touchscreen PC. Uh, so I'm just going to image that over and uh, get it in and well then we're done really, that's nothing left to do, it's going to be perfectly good work in order. And of course we have both touchscreen Man, I studied the race problems. Yeah, and you audio. Know. You don't know nothing about the race problem. You gotta be a crow to know about the race problem. You know what I mean? Do you dig where I'm at? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, there we go. That's an SSD in the hard drive bracket. So, this thing is booting blazing fast now, even though it's a bit of a low end SSD. It's absolutely a million times better than the hard drive that used to be there. However, there is one final thing I want to do about this uh, before we close it up. And that is the speakers. Because uh, I didn't notice while putting the system together at first, but when you have these speakers enclosed in the case, uh, they basically lose all the high end because it has to go through, well, a big metal case which uh, isn't exactly made for sound transmission. And uh, since everything's pointing back, you just get almost no trouble going out the front. So I've experimented and I've found a couple of these Philips Flat TV extra tweeters, uh, which uh, can be mounted rather reasonably with a single screw going like so. And these have a capacitor already on them. So installing these here to give a boost of a treble is a super minor thing to do. You literally just solder the wire into uh, the external exposed contacts of a speaker that's already there. So I'm going to do that and uh, then we're done. Oh, who am I kidding? We're never done. And there we have our extra tweeters attached with one screw and a bunch of hot glue and just soldered straight onto the input connector of the woofer there. So this is going to sound absolutely awful from the back with a case off, but uh, uh, I think uh, when we get the case on and raise this thing back up, it's going to sound reasonable. Uh, they have like a huge lump at around the 2 to 4 kilohertz range in this configuration, uh, so yeah, it's not hi-fi, but uh, come on, the TV speakers on the back of a monitor with a PC inside, it's, it never was going to be hi-fi anyway. Oh, see these things, they are big metal handles to stick your hand in and uh, I can inform you those do not pass through tweeters easily so uh, we had to change to a ugly rear firing kind of mount for these because the handles go right here and it seems the speakers are the perfect height to actually fit in. I probably commented on that when I made this thing but I forgot so. Yeah, that's what we got now. A lot uglier. I'm gonna have to fill the hole up there with hot glue or suffer the horrible port hiss. But yeah, the tweeters, the there. They give more trouble, and more trouble is what we need. 
Alright, and there we have it, back together at last. And of course I run a performance check on it to see just how much better this thing has become. And uh, I'm rather happy with this performance. Uh, we're in the 72nd percentile performance-wise of all the PCs on PC Mark. And uh, the CPU Mark is putting us pretty well everywhere. Uh, only weakness is, of course, the... 3D score since we don't have a dedicated GPU, but the 724 is not too bad for integrated Intel graphics anyway. Uh, what's uh, more fun than anything is that our i7-4770 is actually performing in the top 5% of all 4770s on record at Passmark, and that's due to our blazing fast gaming RAM which I have in this thing. You know, some super high-end DDR3 from back when that was cool. So at 10,644 points, this thing is not a poor performer, CPU-wise, at all. So that's uh, really a happy, a happy ending on this. And of course, we have our speakers. Sounding. Pretty okay.